Let's delve into the often overlooked realm of accounts payable where seemingly minor oversights can snowball into financial disaster. In the intricate dance of business operations, the management of accounts payable plays a pivotal role, and yet it's an area that often flies under the radar until a crisis emerges. Today we'll shine a spotlight on the critical yet underestimated aspects of the accounts payable function, exploring tips and insights that are frequently ignored until disaster hits. Make sure you stick around until the end when we address the one issue that many are woefully ignorant of until it's too late. Overlooked issue number one, I call it lottery winners and losers. What would you do if your entire accounts payable team chipped in and bought a lottery ticket one big time and everyone quit? Would you be able to run your accounts payable process, get the bills paid and keep the lights on? That's where the accounts payable policy and procedures manual, your training manual for your AP staff comes in. It should be complete and up to date so someone could step in and manage to get the bills paid. It wouldn't be pretty, but the lights would stay on. How complete and up-to-date is your policy and procedures manual? Overlooked issue number two, banking pitfall. You've probably heard the saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. As many are learning the hard way, this should also apply to your business bank account. Diversify, diversify, diversify. While it's fine to pay your bills with one from one account, you don't have to have all your money in that account. And even more basic than that, you don't have to have only one bank account. It should be obvious that I'm, but I'm going to state it anyway. The second bank account should not be in the same bank. This is just one of the many lessons learned from the Silicon Valley bank collapse. Overlooked issue number three cyber tricks at the very basic level. Do you rely on that notification from IT that indicates if an email came from an external source? Many IT teams mock such emails in red. It is a really great fraud protection tool, or at least it was until criminals realized what was going on and found a way to defeat this technology. So while it is still a good tactic, the absence of such external email marking should not be taken as a sure sign that the email is safe. You still have to be careful about what links you click on and what attachments you download, even if there is no indication that the email came from an external source. Overlooked issue number four, the ugly trick. Do you know the simplest way to catch an employee who's trying to set up a phony vendor in the vendor file? When setting up a new vendor in the master vendor file, check the vendor's address against the addresses in your HR file. The purpose of this is to help you identify a recalcitrant employee who's trying to set up a phony vendor. Phantom vendors are ne never set up for a good reason. Once you've identified such a match, investigate before accusing the employee of anything. It is possible that there's a legitimate reason for the match. Overlooked issue number five, unwrapping the gift card trip. Do you look for gift cards on employees' expense reports? Of course you not, you say. There's no reason for a gift card to be on an expense report. If this is what you are thinking, you're half right. Gift cards should never be on an expense report. Alas, more than a few employees of dubious character have figured out that they can put a few extra bucks in their pocket by purchasing a gift card at the time they pay for a business meal. Gift cards have become such an issue on expense reports that many companies now require the detailed meal receipt on all restaurant meals along with the receipt showing the total paid, including the sales tax and tip. If you're getting the detailed meal receipts and not finding any gift cards on them, congratulations. Your employees are smart enough not to try and defraud the company in this manner. Overlooked issue number six, overcoming the low automation utilization challenge. Try and say that fast five times. Why don't most automation projects have a higher usage percentage? One of the dirty little secrets in the accounting space is that many automation solutions have an abysmally low utilization rate even a year or two after the system has gone live, some as low as 50%. Yikes. There are numerous reasons for that, but here are a few. Inadequate training, fear on the part of the processor of job loss if the solution is successful, and the big one, the solution requires the organization's vendors to change their existing routine maybe even entering the data in the customer's portal, or basically anything that requires extra work. Inconveniencing your suppliers is a sure way to get utilization, to get low utilization. So look for one that allows them to email their invoices, especially if they're already doing that. Then you can both have your proverbial cake. They don't have to change anything and you get what you want. Overlooked issue number seven. I call this networking for introverts. Do you hate networking? Me too. 
Just the thought of having to enter a room full of strangers smiling while trying to make interesting chit chat sends me into a cold sweat. But I found new ways to network that are pretty simple. Today, I'm going to share one of the easiest ways to network even for the shyest of introverts. If you don't already have a LinkedIn profile, sign up for one. If you do have one, you're halfway there. Starting to invite other people in your field to link to you. Worried that you don't know the people and they won't want to link with you? Don't. I have close to 8,000 LinkedIn connections. Do you think I know each of them personally? Start by sending out 10 or 25 invites every day or week. I've got more tips that will build on this foundation in a longer video, and you can link, there's a link to it in the description. Overlooked issue number eight, what managements want. Did you know that the most desired attribute executives look for when they go to hire an accounting and finance professional? They want someone who can make process improvement recommendations and implement them. It's that simple. Of course, this means if you're going to make process improvement changes in your account's payable function, that you understand how the process works and how the new technology in this area works. That's where the AP Now channel on YouTube can help. You can check out our over 500 videos to help you with various aspects of it. Overlooked issue number nine, the dream of a tidy desk. Have you ever wondered how you could get rid of all that paper on your desk and keep your desk relatively neat and paperless going forward. This is a world I desperately wish to live in and recently found out how I can make some progress in that area. I call it the notebook approach. All you need is a notebook. Anything that you'd write down on a slip of paper or the back of an envelope, write in this notebook. Date it each morning if you wish. It can contain your to-do list, phone numbers, article outlines, video ideas, or anything else that you might scratch on a piece of paper. Take this approach and you'll never be asking that fatal question again. What happened to that paper? Overlooked issue number 10, the ugly truth about vendor refunds. Newsflash, you may be in for a rude awakening if you think your vendors automatically return any duplicate payment you might make. Only about one in a hundred do. The rest take a variety of other actions, some of which may get you your money back, but some, but not always. That's why it's important that you conduct regular statement audit. Overlooked issue number 11, the stop shopping spree you can stop. Have you ever wondered what happens if you don't cancel employees' credit cards when they leave the company, even if you get them back? Probably not, but you should. Here's why. A slick employee will have written down the account number, the expiration date, and that magic three or four digit code, and then they can go online shopping till their heart's content. Can you get that money back? Maybe but it's going to be major league ugly. Before we get to the last few, including two you will find absolutely astonishing. That is, astonishing that this could actually happen. If you're getting value from this talk, please hit the like or the thumbs up button. It sends a message to YouTube and to us that we should produce more content like this. Overlooked issue number 12, the hidden risk of duplicate invoice numbers. You won't believe how many accounting, accounts payable, and finance professionals truly believe that their organizations never make a duplicate payment. They think this because they think they have the silver bullet because their accounting system won't accept duplicate invoice numbers for processing. Now, in all honesty, I thought this too, but it doesn't work that way. What we didn't realize is two things. What they and I didn't realize is two issues which allows duplicates to slip through despite this really excellent control. Number one, it assumes that the invoice number was entered correctly the first time. And this is, by the way, not a safe assumption. It may have been or it may not have been. Second, and this will blow your mind, many processes will change the invoice number when it isn't accepted. Instead of saying maybe this was a duplicate, they just force it through. They simply add a space or a dot or a letter to the end of the invoice number and voila, away it goes because it's not a duplicate. Now, if you are perplexed thinking that they should have realized it was a duplicate, you have a lot of company. Company whose organizations are making unrecovered duplicate payments. This happens far more frequently than you might imagine, unfortunately. Overlooked issue number 13. Take the target off your accounts payable team's back. Did you know that the prime target for online payment fraud is your accounts payable team? Smart criminals have figured out that they are the ones who make payments, and so they are targeting them with phony emails in droves in an attempt to get them to unknowingly divert legitimate payment. Take steps to train your staff to recognize these emails if you haven't already done so. The best way, I believe, is to start 
is to share information about new fraudes as soon as you hear about them. That's why we recently did a video about this horrific new and costly fraud. I was so aghast at the whole matter. I did a short talk on it, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen if you're watching on YouTube and is in the description. Good luck and be safe.